Okay, uh, we're going to get going on uh, the next topic of DNA and we're going to actually look at the physical structure of DNA and what makes up DNA. We kind of went over this when we did the four biological molecules, carbohydrates, uh, lipids, and um, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and then nucleic acids. And that is exactly what DNA is. It is a type of nucleic acid. The letters NA stand for nucleic acid. There are two nucleic acids that we will be looking at. One is DNA, one is RNA. We'll actually be going through the differences between those two. But regardless, both DNA and RNA store genetic information. All right? And this genetic information is stored in somatic cells. Somatic means body. So we're talking about DNA that is in all of your cells that make you up. Skin cells, nerve cells, bone cells, kidney cells, liver cells. All of these cells um, have DNA in them. All right. So DNA is made up of nucleotides. If DNA were the polymer, the large molecule, what is the small thing that makes up the large molecule? That small thing is called a uh, monomer. All right. So the monomer that makes up the polymer DNA is called nucleotides. Nucleotides make up DNA. Uh, it's going to take many, many, many uh, nucleotides to do that. All right. So we say that nucleotides make up a polymer. DNA is nothing but a polymer of nucleotides. So you could write DNA is equal to a polymer of nucleotides. So both DNA and RNA are polynucleotides. Another way to call them. Well, the question is, what makes up a nucleotide? And the answer is, there are three things that make up a nucleotide. And if you remember, we use the universal symbols of a circle, a triangle, and a slight rectangle, which I put as a square, but it could be a square or a little longer uh, rectangle. But Let's take a look. So your three things right here is in purple. That's a phosphate. The phosphate is connected to a sugar. In this case, it is a specific sugar called ribose. The third thing is made up of one of four different nitrogen bases. What are those four nitrogen bases? Well, cytosine, guanine, thymine, and adenine. Okay. All of those end in I-N-E, which signifies that these are amino acids. So the nucleotide bases, or the nitrogen bases, are a type of mm, amino acid. Why did I bracket 1 and 2 and I bracketed 3 and 4? Uh, that is for the purpose of knowing that only C binds with G, only G can bind with C, T binds with A and A binds with T. All right. So how do we construct a DNA molecule? All we have to do is put a bunch of nucleotides together. And this is what we would get.
trying to find a long enough pencil right here. Okay. Alright. Notice the color purple, green, blue, purple, green, blue. Okay, right here. Purple, green, blue, purple, green, blue, purple, green, blue, purple, green, blue. DNA is made up of a backbone called the phosphate sugar backbone. Because on this side we're going phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. But on the other side we start with sugar and go to phosphate. Flips over. Okay. Um, why is that? Okay. Well, it's the way that phosphate binds with sugar. On the left side here we have the phosphate sugars going from a five prime to three prime direction. Take a look here at this phosphate. Here's our sugar. The sugar, this phosphate, binds at the fifth carbon. Okay? So that's why we start with the fifth, or we call it prime five. Okay? On the bottom, this phosphate also binds here at the fifth, but this phosphate is bonding with a sugar above it. This sugar can't rotate, not both of these phosphates cannot be at the same carbon position. So the top one is at the five prime position. And what do you think this position is right here? Yeah, that would be correct. The third carbon. So this goes five to three, five to three, five to three, or you put three down here, put five up here, and five goes towards three. On the opposite side, this is the phosphate binding at the third position. So if our third position on this side is first, our fifth position is first on this side. So here's our rule. The nitrogen bases of DNA. There are only four of them in DNA. There is a fifth one that we'll talk about, but we have to talk about that when we get to RNA. ATCG, adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. Yes, you will have to memorize those names. A binds only to T, C binds only to G. Okay? So, if I were to build my phosphate going from 5 prime to 3 prime that means in 5 prime to 3 prime phosphate has to be first so it goes phosphate sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar phosphate sugar here I have an adenine, cytosine, thymine, and a guanine can anybody tell me what should be the complement to adenine? yep that's correct thymine what would be the complement base to C? That would be G. What's the complement of T? That would be A. And what's the complement of G? You're absolutely right. That would be C. So now we have two strands of nucleotides. And the only thing left to do is twist those into a double helix. All right. Here we have a chromosome. Don't know why I put that there. But you can see the different colors represents the genes. And we'll talk more about that when we get up on chromosomes. All right, we'll get back to, there we go. All right, just to give you some practice, go ahead and fill in the complement at each one of those. I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. 
Well, I get something to drink real quick. This is what you should have gotten. A with T, C with G, C with G, T with A, G, C, A, T, T, A, T, A. Okay? Sometimes you're going to be asked to complete the base sequence or the complementary base to the established base and it'll look like this but sometimes they may just give you a sequence like this and They'll say, according to this sequence, write the corresponding, if this is the 5 prime to 3 prime, what would be the 3 prime to 5 prime complement sequence? A with T, C goes with G, C with G, G, C, T, A, T, A, A, T, C, G, G, C. Take a look at some anatomy of the base pairs. Notice that I put two red lines there. I have three red lines here. Those represent hydrogen bonds. Which one of those base pairs? A to T or G to C, which one of those is stronger? If you said that G to C is stronger, you'd be correct because it has three hydrogen bonds. If radiation, if your cells were exposed to significant amount of radiation, the more likely place that you're going to see DNA breaks are going to be between adenine and thymine. If you're going to see any kind of mutation, you'd probably see it between adenine and thymine, more likely than guanine or cytosine. Not to say that there aren't ever breaks here, uh, we're just saying that this is the weakest bond, it is more likely or apt to uh, break apart. Okay. All right, let's compare RNA with DNA. And note that there are basically three differences. Okay? RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So our first difference Deoxy means to lose one oxygen. So here's the first thing that we notice about the difference between DNA and RNA. RNA has one extra oxygen compared to DNA. Or you could say DNA has one less oxygen than RNA. For instance, there's a single nucleotide, and here are the binding sites for oxygen. 
in RNA, you would see these two oxygens here without any issues whatsoever. But in DNA, look what's missing. We're missing this oxygen right here. Hence the word deoxy. So that is the number one of three differences between RNA and DNA. That is the number of oxygens. The number two difference is RNA has no thymine. Instead, it replaces thymine with uracil. So if you had a nitrogen strand of nucleotides, you would see A, U, C, and G. There would be no T. Okay. So if I were to give you a sequence, like this sequence right here, and I say, is this a DNA sequence or is this an RNA sequence? You would say RNA because the presence of uracil. Uracil means you're dealing with RNA. And then finally, the third difference is that RNA is a single backbone of phosphate and sugars. Or we just say RNA is a single strand of nucleotides. Just a single strand. Not double and twisted, just a single strand. So here I have a phosphate sugar, a single nucleotide, and I'm going to add another nucleotide to it, and I'm going to add yet another nucleotide. So I have phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, base A, C, G. This is a single strand of RNA. Okay, um, that is all we have for today. Um, for students A through K, I'll see you Monday. Uh, students L through Z, we'll see you on Tuesday. All right?